Well, I'm starting a sermon series through Paul's second letter to Timothy. It's an incredible letter for us to be looking at together. And this is the final letter that Paul ever wrote. And final words are important words. And these are important not just for Timothy, not just for the church that Timothy was leading, but they're important words for leaders in the church today and the churches that those leaders are leading. In this video, I'm going to give a big overview of the whole of 2 Timothy. It's very important when starting in any book of the Bible to do hard work in the whole book to try and get your head around what are the big things that the writer is wanting us to see through the whole letter, because these letters would have been written as a whole to the whole church. Interestingly, we see this from this very letter where Paul starts by addressing Timothy here in chapter 1, verse 2, but he ends at the end of the letter, his final words, the Lord be with your spirit, grace be with you all. That final you in the Greek is a plural you. So he's writing not just to Timothy individually, he's writing to the church that Timothy was leading. And we know that the church that Timothy was leading was the church in Ephesus. In Paul's first letter to Timothy, Timothy was also there in Ephesus. And Paul put the spotlight in 1 Timothy, he put the spotlight on Jesus and the salvation that Jesus came to secure for those who trust him. And the big thing in 1 Timothy is that Paul wanted Timothy to remember that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And he wanted Timothy to keep going in his work of proclaiming Christ. And 2 Timothy builds on this as the big point, the main point of 2 Timothy emerges that Paul wants Timothy to finish the work of proclaiming Christ. And as we go through the book in a moment, I'll show you how we see this idea of finishing coming out often. And then sub points under this main point is we see he needs to finish this work of, com of proclaiming Christ by continuing in the truth. And we'll see that over and over again as he endures suffering in view of the life to come. And we'll see these repeated ideas coming out over and over again in this letter. To get more background on this church in Ephesus, I encourage you to go and read Acts chapter 19 and then in Acts chapter 20 where Paul addresses the Ephesian elders and we see very similar themes in that address to the Ephesian elders. And then also go and read the book of Ephesians, Paul's letter to them as a church. You can go and read 1 Timothy. All of that would be really helpful background to help you really understand Paul's emphasis in this book of encouraging Timothy to finish the work. Now, Timothy has sometimes got the rap of being timid Timothy, uh, very much coming from this first section, for the Spirit God gave us does not make us timid. Now, was Timothy really a timid guy? Um, it really doesn't seem so, because if you go and see uh, where Timothy is mentioned, both in the book of Acts and in Paul's letters, uh, we see from the New Testament that he actually seems to be one of Paul's strongest soldiers, sent into some of the hardest churches. Go read 1 Corinthians 4 verse 17, for example. Um, so I don't think that Paul, uh, that Timothy was necessarily a timid guy. Uh, he was actually normal because it's normal to be afraid when the bullets are flying. And that's why this idea of enduring suffering, as you endure suffering, we'll see that throughout the letter, life was hard. And it's normal to be afraid when the bullets are flying. He needed encouragement to stay in the battle. And actually, all of us need encouragement to stay in the battle. This is an encouragement to God's church throughout time to continue in this work of proclaiming Christ by you continuing in the truth as you endure suffering in view of the life to come. If you haven't yet done so, then I encourage you, pause this video now and read through the whole letter of 2 Timothy before you keep watching this video. It will be really helpful for you to read it, reread it, read it again. That's the best tool to start seeing some of the repetition that you uh, will see emerging in this book. Also, spend some time praying that God would help you to understand His truth. 
I've been greatly helped as I've worked through this book by uh, the British pastor, uh, Dick Lucas. Uh, he's got some great uh, lectures on this book of 2 Timothy uh, that you can find on the Proclamation Trust website. And uh, he is just a great gift to the church today in helping ministers to remember the hard work of exegesis, digging deeply into the text to allow the text to speak. Uh, we want to hear God's voice as we come to his truth. Now, just to see some of this key repetition in the book, uh, this first idea of finishing the work, this, this big main point that seems to emerge in 2 Timothy, we see in a number of places. Here in the first passage where Paul says, fan into flame the gift of God. That, that was the gift of uh, being a minister of the gospel. And then he says, now join with me in suffering for the gospel. Keep going in this work. Finish the work of proclaiming Christ. And as we continue through the book, we'll see a number of places where Paul just keeps encouraging him to be strong. The things that he's heard from Paul uh, entrust to others who can continue with this work so that the work of proclaiming Christ will indeed be finished. And it's going to be hard work. Just as Paul endured, he's saying we need to endure. Timothy, you need to endure in this work. Finish the work of proclaiming Christ. Keep reminding God's people of these things. And we'll see the very important thing, this finish the work of proclaiming Christ, it comes from the truth. We, we aren't inventing a truth. It comes from the truth. So keep reminding the people of these things. And as a minister of the gospel, be prepared to keep going in the good work you've been called to, the work of proclaiming Christ so that sinners will be saved. And if you want to finish this work, well, as the teacher, you need to be able to teach, for one thing. And you need to stick to the Holy Scriptures, which are the tool that we use to proclaim Christ. It's through the Holy Scriptures that uh, a person will be thoroughly equipped for every good work, equipped for this work of proclaiming Christ. Discharge all the duties of your ministry. It's a bit of a strange translation here in the NIV. A better translation is the ESV's fulfill your ministry. So finish your work. Do it till the end. Keep going. Don't give up. That's really the thrust of what Paul wants Timothy to remember from this letter. As some people have pointed here, for example, to 4 verse 9, where it says, do your best to come to me quickly. And then uh, he says it again in verse 21, do your best to get here before winter. As some have said that that's the big idea of the whole book. I think that's a, quite a weak, big idea of a whole book. Yes, Paul really wanted Timothy to come. But much more than that, Paul wanted Timothy to finish the work of proclaiming Christ. And he holds himself up as an example of one who has proclaimed Christ faithfully to the end. Because he says here, but the Lord stood at my side and gave me strength so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. So this idea of finishing the work of proclaiming Christ really seems to be the main point of the whole letter. But there are these sub points. And so the way that Timothy was to finish the work of proclaiming Christ was uh, firstly to continue in the truth. And so Paul says a number of things like this. For this reason, I remind you. He wants him to remember the truth that he heard from Timothy himself and its truth that came with great power. And so here again, do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord, the truth about Jesus. He speaks of it also as the gospel. Uh, this gospel that Paul was a herald of. He says here, yeah, Keep as a pattern the things you heard from me, the truth that I proclaimed to you about Christ. Continue in that truth, this pattern of sound teaching. Guard the good deposit. Continue in it. it says, this is my gospel. Remember, Christ, Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, descended from, from David. This is my gospel. Continue in that truth. Because God's word is not changed. And this links in with, yes, Paul is suffering and he's going to say everyone who uh, follows Paul's example of proclaiming Christ will suffer. 
But remember, we continue in a truth that is not chained. God's truth is not chained. So keep reminding the people of these things. The truth about Jesus, who is the Savior of all people. Correctly handle the word of truth. Don't follow those who have departed from the truth. Uh, he prays at the end here that God would grant them repentance so that they would come back to the truth, leading them to a knowledge of the truth. So here he speaks of these false teachers and he says they're always learning, but they never come to a knowledge of the truth. Uh, they, they're trying to find a different truth. Actually, they are opposing the truth. And he's saying, don't be like them. You, however, we see often after he speaks of those who are teaching incorrect truths, he, he says things like this. You, however, know about my teaching. You know the truth that I taught you. Continue in what you've learned and have become convinced of. It's all there in the Holy Scriptures. These Holy Scriptures come from God himself. And it's those Holy Scriptures that will enable you to fully proclaim Christ. Continue in the truth, the truth that Jesus saves. Another way of saying that is do the work of an evangelist. Keep the gospel central. P keep telling people that they need to be saved through Jesus. And non-Christians and Christians need to hear that. Preach the word. Continue in the truth. And here he says, look out for Alexander the metal worker because he opposed our message. He opposed the truth. Don't be like him. Rather, continue in the truth. But a big theme then that we see emerging throughout this whole letter is as Timothy was meant to finish the work of proclaiming Christ as he continued in the truth, a big thing that would happen was that he would suffer. Paul was suffering. Paul was in prison as he wrote this. And he calls Timothy to join with him in suffering says, don't be ashamed of my chains. You see, others were being ashamed of his chains. And today, there are many who preach a gospel that's a false gospel because it says that if you're a Christian, you'll never suffer. Paul never preached that kind of gospel. Actually, we need to preach a true gospel that will say in this life, we will face suffering. See, Paul was suffering because he was a herald of the truth, the gospel. And so he says, join with me in suffering. Like a good soldier of Christ Jesus, uh, like an athlete running the race, like a hardworking farmer, suffer as you seek to proclaim Christ. He says there will be terrible times in these days. And that means suffering will be those who oppose the truth. They were there in the early days of Christianity and they are still there today. And Paul says to Timothy, you know, you followed me. Timothy was with Paul for 15 years. So he had followed him, watching him, uh, how he interacted with others, how he handled suffering. Timothy knew all these things. He knew all about the sufferings and the persecutions. But he says... In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. You will suffer if you live this way. And he was challenging Timothy to keep going, saying, endure hardship. This verse 5 is a really key verse. Keep your head in all situations. Endure hardship. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. Finish the work of proclaiming Christ by continuing in the truth as you endure suffering. And Paul modeled this. He was already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time for his departure was near. These are his final words. Final words are often very important. Paul had been delivered from a lion, the lion's mouth. The Lord would keep rescuing him from every evil attack. But he knew that one day very soon, he would be brought safely home to his heavenly kingdom. And so this is the final big sub-theme that we see. As Paul calls Timothy to finish the work of proclaiming Christ, he says, 
continue in the truth as you endure suffering in view of the life to come. And that idea is not only here right at the end of the book, that's actually how Paul starts. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, in keeping with the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus. The promise of life. That's what Paul wanted Timothy to remember. You see, because unless you are absolutely persuaded that this glorious future is yours in Christ, unless you are persuaded of that, then you'll never be willing to suffer for this gospel. And so Paul reminds Timothy of this promise of life, and he does it throughout the book, this life and immortality that are his in Jesus. Uh, he says he's entrusted this to me until that day. He knows that a day is coming. The day is coming. The day is soon. When we will be with Christ in eternal glory, we will live with him, reign with him, and Paul knew that he was just about there. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness that the Lord will award to him on that day. And not only to me, but to all who have longed for his appearing. Timothy, finish the work of proclaiming Christ by continuing in the truth as you endure suffering because that day is coming. The day when he appears, when you will receive your crown of righteousness, all because of what Jesus has done. Keep going. And Paul knew that he was soon to be safely in that heavenly kingdom as his race was coming to an end. So now these are key themes uh, that we see emerging as we make our way through the book of 2 Timothy. Uh, we see Paul says a whole lot about our Lord Jesus Christ and the grace that is ours in him and the peace that is ours in him. Uh, he keeps on pointing to uh, Timothy's sincere faith and the heritage uh, from where that came, from his grandmother and his mother, uh, the sincere faith that was his. Um, he, points, he points us um, to the love that are, that's in Christ Jesus. And we see that uh, love repeated uh, a couple of times in the book. He's saying, pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with all who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. You know about the love that I showed. So he points to himself as an example of somebody who loved well. Now, there are many other smaller repeated ideas and themes that will emerge as we make our journey through this book in more detail. The first section that I'm going to be digging into in the next video uh, are these opening verses, which really uh, set us up for everything else that we will see in the book. Uh, but the big call that we want to see throughout this is that Paul wanted Timothy to finish this work. Paul himself was about to finish his work here on earth. And he knew he was heading towards this promise of life. He was calling Timothy to do that. And he's calling faithful ministers of the gospel to do that. But not only is he calling those who preach the gospel as paid workers to do that. But this is a letter to the whole church. Because he ends by saying, the Lord be with you, be with your spirit. Grace be with you all. This is a message to all of us. All of us have the opportunity in this world in which we will endure suffering, we have the opportunity to proclaim Christ. And we need to continue by doing that as we stick to the truth about Jesus, the Savior of the world, and as we long for the life that is ours because of Jesus, when we will be safely in his heavenly kingdom. And with our eyes fixed there, we live today in a way that points to our Savior, the one who's made it possible for us to be there. And so I encourage you to take some time, read through this book a few more times. It's a short letter. Uh, look for these themes and praise God for King Jesus, the Savior, who we get to proclaim, who we rest in, even in the face of real suffering, we can rest in him, knowing that the best by far is yet to come. 
and we want others to be with us in this life to come. So we proclaim Christ from the truth. There is only one truth. We can't make it up. We have the truth in God's word. So let's proclaim Christ from that truth until the day when we are with him. Well, God bless as you dig in further to this wonderful book and I look forward to this journey along with you.